Okay, we want to look at the capillary pressures. There are two pressures in a capillary. One is hydrostatic pressure, and the other is osmotic pressure. Okay, let's look and see our capillary. We're going to say that blood is flowing this direction, and this is the arterial end, and this is the venule end. Okay, you can remember that we have red blood cells in our blood. So here we're going to have our red blood cells. And we're also going to show our proteins. So we'll have our little plasma proteins. So we want to look at our pressures, moving the blood in or out of the capillary. Okay, the first pressure is the hydrostatic pressure. The hydrostatic pressure is a result of the blood pressure. So if you just remember that the blood pressure is going to be carrying the blood towards the capillaries. You remember that whenever we looked at the structure of all of the blood vessels, we said that the pressure in a capillary is going to vary between 40 and 20. So here at the arterial end, you'll have the higher pressure. So you have the higher hydrostatic pressure of about 40. And on the venule end, you have the hydrostatic pressure of about 20. What this means is whenever the pressure pushes the blood towards the arterial wall, this means that water is going to exit the capillary. And it's going to gradually decrease as you get to the venule end. So our hydrostatic pressure, as we said, is 20 at the venule end. It would be somewhere around 30 here in the middle and 40 at the arterial end. Okay, what does that do? It pushes water. Water is pushed out of the capillary. into the interstitial space. Water is pushed out of the capillary into the interstitial space. If you notice from our drawing, on the venule end, it looks a little more concentrated than what it was on the arterial end. The reason for that is your water left. So it made the concentration it made the concentration of the blood thicker in the venule end, and so osmosis is going to occur, and this is going to result in an osmotic pressure. Your osmotic pressure is somewhere around 25 on your venule end, so you're going to have a little bit of water entering the capillary. And then in the middle here, your osmotic pressure, notice that it's not as concentrated, so you have a tiny bit of water coming in. And then on your arterial end, you're not going to have very much water coming in because the blood is not very concentrated there. If you look at our numbers, our osmotic pressure on the arterial end is about 15. And on the venule end, it actually is higher. The osmotic pressure is 25. The reason it's higher on, your, on the venule end is because the blood is more concentrated as it, as it gets closer to the venule. The reason it's more concentrated as it gets closer to the venule is because it lost more water by the hydrostatic pressure. Okay, we have a net result of, you can see that the osmotic pressure is not going to push an equal amount of water back into the capillary as what the hydrostatic pressure pushed out. So you're going to have the net movement of water is out. And that's going to result in edema. Okay, this edema is going to be decreased by water, will, water entering, water is absorbed into the lymphatic vessels. And we'll be looking at the lymphatic vessels and what it does with this fluid whenever we look at the lymphatic system. For right now, you need to know that the excess water, much of it is removed by the lymphatic vessels and it's going to return to the bloodstream. So fluid in the lymphatic vessels originally came from what? It originally came from the bloodstream. It was pushed out of the bloodstream by hydrostatic pressure and it entered their lymphatic vessels 
and then the lymphatic vessels return it back into the bloodstream.